What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to eSpeak Compete, a podcast where we talk about everything going on in esports and gaming all over the space. Welcome to episode six. I'm your host as always. My name is Yeso. I'm joined by my co-host, rocking the down do as always, Luke Shimona Hebrew here with me once again. Happy Monday, my man. Welcome back. Happy Monday, indeed. Um, episode six, like you said, pretty cool. We're, like, we're always talking about how we're cruising through these, time flying by, and you know, pretty excited for another week of esports. Yes. Lands keep coming back, so the, the stories just keep getting crazier. Um, and even just today, tons of big news coming out. So uh, I feel like we got a lot to talk about, talk about. But I mean, even for us, actually, we're crazy. Yes. We're doing lands too, guys. We got we got big story later on. You know, no spoilers. But uh, it's been a it's been a good start to the week so far, and uh, I'm excited to keep it going. Yeah, it's definitely been uh, a fun weekend for us. Big news all across the space, and we got a ton to cover. So uh, honestly, we'll get right into it. We're starting at the top with Valorant. Obviously, they've been, had the biggest event going on over the last couple of weeks. DCT Masters 3 has been going on, and it finished up over the weekend, three days in a row of playoff action, and we finally get a champion. Gambit wins DCT Masters 3. Uh, they beat NV 3-0. In the grand finals, they only dropped a single map in the entire knockout stage, which was in their quarterfinal matchup against Vision Strikers, and they honestly look really good. They 2-0 G2, 3-0 against Envy, and EMEA has uh, a, a title, so that's uh, absolutely huge. The tournament was a blast to watch all weekend. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I was definitely surprised by the, the outcome of a lot of different things going on throughout sure. the uh throughout the event but nonetheless an awesome event um and uh, you know a lot a lot of i'm sure you have them on your you know different bullet points but a lot of a lot of highs couple lows you know for some of our na boys if you will mm -hmm. um but overall i mean pretty good performance across the board from most of the regions yeah you know i wouldn't say that there was any region that i was like back to the drawing board boy <laughs> you know what i mean like i feel like there's a lot of a lot of solid talent in a lot of the different regions um some of it even pretty young and kind of grow into um, a, a pretty developed scene, I'd say, over the next couple of years, and I'm, I'm definitely excited for, uh, what is it, Champions or whatever? Mm -hmm. Champions. I'm excited for that as well. Yeah, ton of different stories coming out of the tournament as a whole. Uh, Crazy Raccoon was one of kind of the feel-good stories. This is uh, a team from uh, Japan, I believe, that was not expected to really make any noise, but they really uh, gave Gambit a run for their money in their group final because uh, the way the groups work, uh, I mentioned this on a previous show, you have four teams in your group, you play a first round matchup and then there's a loser's bracket. So it's a small double Elin bracket. And it ended up with uh, Gambit losing to 100 Thieves in the upper bracket final. That meant 100 Thieves went on to uh, the knockout stage. And so Gambit had to wait for the last team uh, from that lower side bracket. It was Crazy Raccoon. And they actually, even it being a 2-0 series for Gambit, was way closer than the score would indicate. So I think that is part of the reason that I was surprised that Gambit did so well. Uh, in the bracket stage, but the cool thing is uh, Crazy Raccoon qualify for champions. A uh, ton of implications for multiple regions based on the results because uh, Envy has now qualified four champions off of their circuit points, which is huge. So Sentinels and Envy will be representing North America, but we talked about this on a previous show with NA not winning the tournament. TSM's year is done. 100 Thieves will go to the LCQ to try and secure that last spot, but uh, TSM uh, are done for the year in Valor, and that one's certainly going to hurt with the first World Championship coming up. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to say I'm at least a little surprised. Like, I definitely, I mean, we knew it was coming, I guess. Like, sure. I think it was pretty unlikely, uh, or not unlikely, but statistically unlikely at least, um, that TSM would be able to snag that last spot, assuming that NA did, you know, win that, that extra slot and mm -hmm. qualification. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's, I can't necessarily say I would have been, I would expect TSM's current roster to have performed admirably anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, And you'd I, still have to fight through the L seven other teams yeah, in the LCQ. Exactly. That's the one thing to note is, like, TSM was 11th in circuit points in NA. So they have not done really anything to have high expectations yep, of them exactly. throughout this year. And that was just kind of the final nail in the So coffin. it's more of just like a, a cultural thing, right? Where sure. it's like, I can't believe that TSM is missing out on the first yes. because they've been so involved mm -hmm. in Valorant since literally like day one. So kind of disappointing. I'm sure we'll see a lot of changes from the TSM Valorant mm -hmm. side over the, you know, coming into the next season. 
Um, and I'm excited to kind of see what they put together because they are not fans of losing. Yeah. I will tell you that for sure. I mean, especially as like what would the most uh, valuable quote unquote as far as like dollars and cents go esports or by like a large margin yes not even being able to break top 10 in north america and the you know north america's largest up-and-coming esport title mm -hmm. i don't know a little sus there there's definitely gonna need to be <laughs> you know a little a little bit of self-reflection yeah it's like that Over one season distance. the lakers were bad it's like <laughs> it's like unacceptable one season <laughs> okay relax there were a few there were a few uh some other takeaways from the tournament uh sentinels mm. interestingly enough they were uh, odds on favorites going into the tournament actually only finished top eight. They lose their quarterfinals matchup against Envy, which granted, Envy, Envy looks like second, a really good right? team. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they obviously got second losing to, to Gambit. Um, you know, that's not like, uh, uh, that's not a bad team to lose to, but they lost to them 2-0, which is surprising. And then uh, the, it's also the fact that, you know, Sentinels maybe would have had a guarantee guaranteed and i use the word term guaranteed loosely but an almost guaranteed top four um but they drop their second group stage matchup against the g2 which they got 2-0'd in that matchup as well and that was how we ended up with all three north american teams on the same side of the bracket we had 100 thieves versus ascend in the first round and then envy and sentinels uh uh as the other matchup on that side of the bracket so uh you know no Tournament format is perfect, and I wouldn't necessarily blame the format for this. It's just a, a weird kind of quirk of it. But Sentinels, uh, you know, that G2 matchup became even more important as you see how things worked out in knockout stage. Yeah, honestly, like the whole top eight was pretty, you know, it was almost hard to gauge, right? Because there was a lot of like, oh, that team's the best, and then they get 2 0 by this team who got 2 0 by that team who sure. made, you know what I mean? It, 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 was pretty, it was pretty wonky in that sense. That's probably just a, um, you know, it's, it's a cult, it's a, a direct relation of the game being pretty young, mm -hmm. right? The meta being young, the comp, the comp um, state being pretty young in the sense where a lot of these players haven't played against each other, play styles, regions, you know, this is one of the first, if first LAN in yeah. that sense, right? Especially cross region wise. So, you know, it makes sense that there's a, a lot of variety there, I guess. Um, because I definitely would have expected at least a little bit more of, <laughs> you sure. know, like a little less two O's in those. And some of those two O's are pretty brutal. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you never know. E either way, it was uh, still a blast to watch. And I do definitely wish that uh, Sentinels um, would have done a, a little bit better in that sense. But uh, overall, I think North American teams played really well throughout the almost the entire time. Um, and I'm excited just to, to kind of see the, the future events and, and how the, the scene will develop. And, and hopefully TSM especially comes back because, you know, I'm a TSM fan. Sure, so. sure. Last few notes uh, just on Masters to kind of close up this topic. Uh, we mentioned TSM, their year being done with Gambit winning. Uh, Fnatic actually qualify for champions, so right. that's huge. That's a big org that Super we'll be cool, going. Yeah. Um, and then also, VCT Masters Berlin peaked at 811,000 viewers, and that was specifically during that second group stage matchup between Sentinels and G2. Obviously, two of the biggest orgs in the space. Huge matchup, so no surprise that it peaked there. Um, but the grand final still peaked at just short of 700,000 viewers, 692,000 viewers during the NV Gambit grand final. So I say that's really good numbers, especially when you're leading into what is going to be their world championship here in a couple of months. Yeah, I love seeing the EU side of things really drive the viewership for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of similar to what we see in Counter Strike. I think yeah. that it's just so big in that space, and I love seeing mm -hmm. Valorant be able to capitalize honestly on a lot of that viewership and be able to you know i don't, I don't want to say like take it because it's not like he was stealing from it right but just to be able to you get that kind of similar viewership and to have like the north america versus the eu side of things sure. like it makes sense that that drove the most viewership clearly all the americans went to sleep when we lost smart play you know we were, <laughs> we were like we're done we're going to bed like get out of here but yeah. um great viewership super cool right it's just crushing yeah love to see that and uh excited and we're going to move on to uh, some big LAN events on the horizon. Obviously, we've mentioned it a couple of times here. Uh, Valorant Championships uh, will be this December, in fact, December 1st through the 12th. Uh, and of note, they actually have shifted that event to Berlin. I believe it was supposed to take place here in North America, but just due to everything going on with travel restrictions and all kinds of things like that, they feel like going back to Berlin, which is where they just held Masters, is the best option for them. If it, uh, if it ain't broke. Yeah. I, I agree, uh, but there's a ton of LAN events this fall and winter uh, because you have champions. Obviously, the League of Legends World Championship is going to be taking uh, place in Reykjavik, Iceland. That starts uh, in a few weeks here, October 5th. 
We've got the International 10 for Dota 2 kicks off October 7. That one's in Bucharest, Romania. Uh, and then the PGL Major for CSGO is going to be held in Stockholm. Uh, and f specifically for the International and the PGL Major, there's going to be some restrictions in terms of masks and vac vaccination proof, uh, both required completely for the International. And I have a quote from PGL CEO here uh, in regards to the CSGO Major. He said, I firmly believe the only way to bring back massive LAN events is to require complete vaccination of attending players, talent, and spectators. This will be a requirement for all upcoming PGL 2022 events. So I think that's great. I think it's, you know, we've talked about a couple times here on the show, uh, building this confidence with your audience and protecting the players and the staffs of these orgs is very important. And these tournament organizers are taking the steps to ensure that they can do that so that these events get off without a hitch. Because we talked about the R6 major with players getting sick there. And it's important that these TOs are understanding what needs to be done to take care of this. Because, you know, if you take care of the players, the event's better, right? There's so many other reasons, but just like, even the most selfish reasons of having the event go well and look good, you win if you protect your players. Yep, no, I totally agree. I think it's it's obviously really it's really cool to see. I mean, it's really cool to see them doing what they should be doing, right? Yes. Like, of course, it's certainly it's, you know it's you know nothing nothing too crazy to obviously you know assume that that's the only way to do it. Yes, right. It has. They, they're totally right. Like, it, you have to be fully vaccinated, right? Like, and and especially in these times, even if you are, still be wearing a mask, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we're still seeing that a lot of those physical events and. You know, it seems to be working, right? Like, and you know, you see Riot going back to Berlin, right? Like mm -hmm. we said, if it's if it's not broken, just keep rocking and rolling. If the travel restrictions, if the if the um, lack of better term hospitality and whatnot, and the safety protocols are all up to snuff, then it's like just you know, if you know, like you said, if we're keeping the players safe, then it's a it's a W in our books. And if mm -hmm. we're able to produce the entertainment at the same time, right, the content that we've been missing out on, yeah. right, for this whole time, then. You know, it's it's kudos to the the organizers, the broadcast team, the even the players and the organizations themselves. That it's there's no way what all the work and effort that goes into it is easy, no. or especially cost efficient. Even, you know what I mean? Like the amount of additional funding that they're probably putting into these events mm -hmm. is ridiculous. So it's you know it's it's definitely uh, you know I don't want to draw any attention away from how much extra effort they probably are putting in to make sure that these do go off without a hitch. And I think Certainly. that's you know pretty. Um, a pretty cool thing. I, I like it a lot more than people just being like, nah, we'll just run events next year. Sure. And we'll run, just run events next year. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where it's like, just because it's not, you know, at this point I feel like it's it's not a safety thing per se, just only, right? It's it's way more than that too, right? A lot of these companies are literally just doing nothing. Yeah. Right? They're just sitting on their hands and, and waiting for, you know, everything to go back to complete normal. But I really love seeing the, the pioneers of the industry, if you will, you know, pushing through it, finding creative ways to, you know, keep people safe and, you know, keep creating really fun and engaging content, even if it's not exactly the same that it was and mm -hmm. takes a little bit extra funds, takes a little bit extra effort, whatever it might be. So that's all. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I really love seeing everything that Riot's doing. I really love seeing, you know, everything that that'll come for the from the rest of the Q4 events, obviously, in general. And I hope that everyone who's doing nothing will do something. Yeah, so. and I mean, I think it really shows that it's not, uh, you know, certainly there's a, a bunch of logistical hurdles behind it, but in terms of understanding the the kind of top of the ladder choices you have to make in terms of, hey, you gotta be vaxxed, you gotta wear masks, we're gonna do some social distancing stuff. Like, these are not complicated concepts, you know? There's going to be some hurdles in terms of implementing that, but I think from understanding what exactly needs to be done uh, uh, just upfront, it's very simple. And so it's good to see everybody recognizing that they're taking the necessary steps to protect everybody involved. And I think it's gonna produce some awesome events. I have no, uh, I, I, or I should say, I have high expectations for all of these events, right? The international CSGO majors, League of Legends World Championships, some of the most incredible events, not even just esports, right? These are just period, some of the most incredible events in the world every single year. And I think regardless of COVID going on, I think these are going to go off and be absolutely awesome viewers across the world are going to enjoy them uh and it's even incredible to to know that you know they're expecting a packed house for playoffs at the pgl major out in stockholm which i think is awesome right i'm personally looking forward to getting to go to hockey games again this season the ducks have announced that they're going to do have vaccination for everybody and they're doing the same thing out there so i think it's it's awesome we're slowly starting to see this return to normal doing the right things to make sure everybody's safe and i think it's it's awesome lands it's it's about time. 
you know, a year and a half in. It's about time. Um, the next topic we have to talk about is one that has hit close to home here for us here at Esports Arena, and it's Apex Legends. And it's still broken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> according to a tweet from Respawn from a few days ago, they said uh, a quote-unquote return to normal may not happen until their next planned patch on September 22nd, which is uh, two days from the day of recording. Uh, there have just been tons of players continuing to have issues throughout the weekend, though they have pushed out uh, some things that they've hoped would be able to fix the issues, but uh, the Band-Aids have, for the most part, seemingly uh, not worked. Lots of players dealing with crashes, disconnects, uh, s essentially slow-mo gameplay. It's been uh, really a, a very, very tough week for the Apex community. Um, <laughs> Dude, okay, if you guys look. are just listening to this on Spotify or Apple, just Luke searching uh. for the words. Because let's be clear, we run Series E here at Esports Arena. Series E right now is just Apex Legends. It's been tough. We had to cancel both days last week. And it's been a, a very continuous discussion for us here over the last week. It's been hard. Dude, it's so brutal. Like, I yeah. just don't. I literally, I mean, look, I get it's hard. There's a bunch of crazy stuff going on, whatever yes. it is. But it, I could be wrong. I'm not a, I'm not some kind of game coding wizard. But have yes. they ever heard of a rollback before? Like that why, was a very like literally. Thing last why week, not just roll the servers back so that people can play the game and then fix the servers on your back end testing realm and then relaunch the patch a week behind schedule or whatever. They needed. They clearly needed a lot of time. Sure. It's not like they were like, clearly weren't close. Whatever game-ending bug is in there that's destroying the servers, um, they clearly they needed a, an enormous amount of time to find it and, and implement a fix for it. And mm -hmm. they, they might not even know what it is, right? So I don't know if they left it like this so that they could have some additional testing because they like they were like we don't even know what it is. Like we just need people to keep trying so that we can yeah. keep so that we can see the error bugs and like try to like figure out where the hole is. And I get that, but for this 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 length of time, I'm talking like so many events, both EA events, our events, tons of other events have all been canceled, yep. right? Like the ALGS is supposed to start in like or the Pro League is supposed to start like in a couple of weeks. I think they're weeks. supposed to have qualifiers again this weekend. Yeah, but like, no, the pro league is supposed to start in like a couple of weeks and the pros can't even play the game. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's, it's it's pretty brutal. I don't get why they didn't just do a rollback. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, a game coder by any means, so it could be way more complicated than I'm making it seem. Sure. Which I can only imagine it is because otherwise I feel like they probably would have just pulled that, that plug. But... Either way, it has been brutal. I know the devs are working on it, so I hope they uh, they're they're able to buckle down and, and you know fix it up for Wednesday. I know yeah. we're moving our show uh, again this week, but this is even the last week of Series E, so I really mm -hmm. hope that we're we're able to uh, get some some quality gameplay in there and, and you know close the the season out strong. But you know I'll leave it there. There's no, nothing to really harp on. It's obviously just been unfortunate, but it's been cool seeing all the Apex guys have to branch out. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean all, all I'll really say is like you know. EA is not a, EA is not some small indie company. This is a big organization, um, and I find it unacceptable to have your game in this kind of broken state for as long as it has been. And it, and it goes back to the fact that this isn't the first time this has happened. We had to cancel uh, competitive days of Series E early on in Season 3, and uh, it has happened even months prior to this where uh, a patch has come out and the game has been essentially unplayable. So, you know, I hope that this last week is kind of a reality check for everybody over there. Uh, and I hope there is more uh, done to ensure that this doesn't happen again. I'm not necessarily holding my breath, but it's definitely been a rough week for everybody in the Apex community. And it's going to be interesting to see what the response and the fallout is from it after things get back to uh, normal. So definitely a tough week. Uh, hoping we get Apex back here very soon. So I kind of missed it, I'll be honest. So Me too. I mean, I've been trying to grind ranked. I'm, try I'm trying to hit platinum. And... I played Call of Duty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I won't, I mean, we'll, That's we'll, how we'll bad leave, this we'll leave has it. been. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, I was going to leave it to the end of the show here to talk about <laughs> what we were playing this week. But 
<laughs> Holy shit, guys. I'm going to be honest. I loaded up a little bit of Call of Duty Vanguard. Wow. Okay, because the open beta was going on this sure. weekend. Apex was down, you know, your boy. Logged on late at night. Everybody was on. I was like, fine. I'll download the <laughs> damn game. Downloaded pretty quick, so I was impressed with that because Download, I expected like the it, whole terabyte update. Well, or I expected whatever. it to be a really long time, but I downloaded it in like five minutes. So that was oh, dope. Okay. Jumped on, and uh, it honestly was pretty easy just to jump right in and start and start playing and, and fragging out. Uh, it's exactly that what, what you would expect. To no one's surprise, it's a Call of Duty game. Yeah. Um, so that's exactly how it played. You know, you play, you shoot your guns, you upgrade them, you get new attachments and stuff. As always, it's absolutely ridiculous that I load into a game with, like, some default garbage weapon and this dude runs twice as fast as me, scopes in twice as fast <laughs> as me, you know what I mean? Like, reloads twice as fast yep. as me, can't be seen by any of my freaking radars, right? This guy, and little old newbie Luke's just running around getting clowned. But, hey, you know, it's it was fun. I had a good time with it. Um... For some reason, my controller options were locked. It was only letting me play mouse and keyboard, which didn't, I didn't really mind. I was going to play mouse and keyboard anyway, but I also wanted to try controller. But I wasn't able to try controller yet. It was probably just user error. But overall, Call of Duty Vanguard, first impressions, it's Call of Duty. Play it if you like Call of Duty. I feel like that can just be the tagline for every Call of Duty game for the rest of time. It's just Call of Duty, subtitle here. It's, it's Call, Call of Duty. Duty. <laughs> That's it. Give us $60. Ship it. Millions of teenagers will buy it. You'll Give be fine. Give $60. Because, <laughs> again, I would have never bought this game in a million years, but free open beta. There you go. No Apex Legends. Here I come. There you go. <laughs> uh, on another shooter here, uh, talked about a little Call of Duty there. Let's talk about Battlefield 2042. Uh, the game's oh, hey. release has been delayed until uh, November. Uh, a quote here from uh, an article uh, from Dot Esports. Uh, Building the next generation of Battlefield during a global pandemic has created unforeseen challenges for our development teams. Given the scale and scope of the game, we had hoped our teams would be back in our studios together as we move towards launch. With the ongoing conditions not allowing that to happen safely, and with all the hard work the teams are doing from home, we feel it is important to take the extra time to deliver on the vision of Battlefield 2042 to our players. Uh, and that is from the statement that the developer uh, released late last week. Um, I mean, this is not the first uh, big shooter title to get a delay here due to COVID. Obviously, we saw it because of Halo Infinite. Um, personally, personally, I'm not a Battlefield fan, so I don't really care. But when I see it compared to other games like this, I'm like, hey, I think other titles have, have done right by their employees and delayed it and made sure that it comes out in uh, a, a better state than it would be. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts on it? Well, I, I feel like, I think the, the quote that you said in, in the, um, on your card there was, Apex Legends servers delayed to 2024, right? It was 2042, <laughs> is that, or what, uh, what, 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 is that what it was? I don't know. Respawn, yeah, you! You know, e, I mean, here we are with EA again, another EA story. Um, yeah. Battlefield, I'm also going to kind of be on the train of, oh no, like, not Battlefield. No, yeah. but I don't think it's a big deal. It's whatever. Um, I'm surprised it took them so long to announce it. I feel like they should announce it way earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't understand why it takes so long for them to know. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's pretty obvious. Like, no way are we finishing this game by November. That's, or by, what, I, that's like, what I find interesting is when, like, when I'm looking hell? at a game that is it's supposed to release, uh, I think next month was when it was originally planned. I'm like, what state is the game in now that all of a sudden now you're saying it won't be ready? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm almost, I would almost be thinking, like, isn't the game done by now? And I guess maybe because it isn't due to these delays that they had to back it up, but I don't know. It's another. Be, I mean, you gotta be doing of, player testing, dev. bug fixing, and sure. like marketing and all that stuff in the last couple of months, right? Like I yeah. doubt it's just. I mean, the game is probably done. So, I don't know. I think that was pretty weird. I mean, I think it's. I mean, I think it's pretty weird in general, but I don't really think it's a. You know, almost everything is delayed. Sure. So, you know, I I think that's pretty standard. I think that uh, it is a little. Again, it's just a very surprising late in the game. COVID yeah. call out. Yeah. So, I don't know, a little weird, but it's EA, so what do you mean? I mean, I think it's it's always a bummer, <laughs> especially if it's a title that you really care about and you're really yeah. excited for to see it delayed. But I think from what I've seen, and you look at, let's look at a game like Cyberpunk yeah. that released in, you know, definitely a, a, a difficult state, especially for, like, older gen, uh, you know, as compared to, like, on the Xbox One, compared to the Xbox Series X and stuff like that. And 
that did not come out in a state that a lot of players were happy with. So if I'm looking at that, I'm like, hey, wait a couple more months, make sure it comes out clean and looks good. I'm all for that because I'd rather not play a broken game on release. So if this means that it comes out and the developers are happy with it on release and therefore the players are happy with it on release, I'm all for it. It sucks for sure. And for all the Battlefield 2042 fans that are listening or watching, I feel for you. It sucks. But, uh, you know, hopefully it means that you were happier with the game on release in November than you would have been in October. Yeah. So. I mean, there's pretty much nothing else to say about it, right? Sure. What are you going to do? It is what it is. Uh, let's circle back to uh, us kind of here at Esports Arena. Uh, we were doing a lot of work last week that we weren't talking about. And that's because there was a big event coming on Friday. Two big esports orgs that y'all may know at home, FaZe Clan, Optic Gaming, came together to do an awesome merch launch. The merch is awesome. Uh, I've seen a lot of it in person. It's fantastic. I know people were super crazy about it. And for the launch event, they did a classic Modern Warfare 2 tournament that was an absolute blast to watch and obviously if you guys saw the show we here at esports arena hosted it and ran the event and it was so much fun yes it was literally an absolute blast i mean it, it we got you know the optic boys you know moes and um hex, hex scum scum yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, the whole boys here. the whole nine was here all the face clan boys mm -hmm. adept and um, you know, Scope was here. Scope was popping off. And, yes. And, you know, Adapt and, and all those boys were all here having a good time. And it was super cool just, you know, not just producing the live stream piece, obviously, mm. that we were producing, but also just, like, you know, there was a bajillion different videographers. These guys are doing social media for this. And these guys are filming this content shoot for this ad. And these guys are filming the vlog. And mm. these guys, you know, all these different content things happening all at the same time. So it was a super cool collaboration between the two brands. Like you said, the merch drop is badass. Yes. Go, go over to faceclan.com if you guys mm -hmm. want to check it out. I mean, it's sold out or whatever it is. Like, it's not even being sold anymore. But you guys, so, yeah. go, <laughs> you guys can go look at it. I'm saying yeah. just to look. You cannot purchase it. Get bodied uh, if you missed out. But a uh, super cool collab. I mean, some of the coolest items I saw on the website, they didn't even have here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They weren't. They didn't even have in person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, super excited for all that kind of jazz uh, and more events like that to come for sure. But I think that uh, just two iconic brands like that teaming up mm -hmm. to host. To not, the merch collab itself is badass, right? Because yes. like have, you never thought you were going to have a phase optic hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Like that's... That's the, the logo they put together, all that stuff, super badass. Um, but the fact that they did like a Modern Warfare 2 like throwback actual tournament, and mm -hmm. it was so crazy to watch. Like what a fun old school game to play. Like I had it was a blast. Super fun to watch. If you guys didn't if you guys missed it out, missed out on it, check out, you know, just go to Face Clan. I'm sure they have tons yeah. of content everywhere. Yeah. So it was a blast. It was really cool too because, you know, we had uh, shout outs to uh, James Lopez who crushed it working on getting it running uh, our entire production team uh connie tyler it uh ryan and k2 uh, we had a ton of people here at esports arena working on just getting this running and you know we're obviously we've been in this new space for a while and then on short notice we're like hey we got to build out this awesome event and thankfully we got great support from optic and phase uh luke and everybody here uh at you know the higher ups uh helping us all out and they put on an incredible event i mean it was cool we were testing Modern Warfare 2 all week, so, you know, I was taking every excuse every day at the end of the workday, and I'm like, you know, I think we got to go over there and just test just a little bit more, you know, I think we got to make sure everything's running just right, you know, just, just, we, we want to be safe, so we, we got to play Modern Warfare more. 2 all week, yeah. it was so much fun. Yeah, it, it's so cool, we were playing on, like, a modded version on the PC, right, mm -hmm. so, like, it's super fast, no load times, right, like, all that kind of stuff, and, and also we're playing on mouse and keyboard. So it's like total just fiesta, dude. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, absolute blast of an event. Super cool. I'm excited to see if brands like Phase and Optic will do more throwback events with like other orgs mm -hmm. uh, or other games potentially, right? Like there's so many old school games like that. You know, even, you know, we saw what the Halo 2 Twitch Rivals throwback event a yep. little while back, very similar to that, but kind of on a more brand scale. Mm -hmm. So super cool, super exciting event um, and definitely excited for more um, events like that to keep popping up. I mean, again, it's post-pandemic. Anything can happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's so cool, again, seeing just that many people all together in the same place. You know what I mean? Like, those guys probably hadn't all seen each other in such a long time. So super cool. Yeah. And that was also another cool thing is just seeing these guys who have competed together against each other, been in the space together for so long, getting to 
come together and do a fun event like this was was a blast. So yep. they certainly enjoyed it. Uh, we enjoyed it as well. Love it. And go check out the merch, even if you can't buy it, because it's awesome. Uh -huh. Basically, I found reselling on eBay. That's going to be rough. I wonder. It probably is rough. It probably, granted, it probably won't happen yet because I don't think anybody's gotten their merch yet other than some people. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I will uh, definitely be curious to see how that works out because it seems like it happens every time with these very exclusive merch drops. All right. Next thing we can talk about, we mentioned them earlier on in the day with Fnatic qualifying uh, for champions for Valorant. Uh, but they had some other big news over the weekend. They signed a five-year 15 million dollar deal with crypto.com uh, it's been a recurring topic here on the show through six episodes and it's crypto and esports coming together uh, Luke you've had a lot of thoughts on this topic before what do you think about this one okay well I mean I would say when I was reading through this I, I just I just keep getting blown away and how many esports organizations are jumping into the crypto space because in my experience and all of our events we've ever hosted and running so many different events and um, working with so many different organizations and influencers and brands, it's always just been like crypto is a literal full-blown like no-go category when it comes to um, like game developers from the past. Like every single event uh, or every single like event license I've ever had, every single like community guideline sheet I've ever had, like there's mm. always an entire section dedicated to making it so you can't work with brands that deal with alcohol, nicotine, mm -hmm. drugs of any kind, firearms, pornography, sure. and cryptocurrency is always in there, mm -hmm. right? So it's one of those things where I, I'm, I always have just stayed so far, far away from it and like not really touched it at all, not in my personal life, of course, but mm -hmm. on the business side of things because one, the game developers are, you know, seem to be against, seem to be against it. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's the case, then a, you know, a company like Esports Arena probably shouldn't dabble with something that would make game developers want to work with us less. Yes. Two, parents, right? I feel like cryptocurrency is very uh, scary for parents, Yes. right? Like again, not all parents, but I feel like that older generation and, or older generation just in general doesn't fully understand cryptocurrency. I mean, hell, our generation barely understands cryptocurrency, right? right. Um, and in, in, in that situation, it can be just scary to them. Mm -hmm. Right, like esports in general is scary enough. So now, if we add a level of yeah, come and compete in our professional esports tournament, and then if you win, you earn cryptocurrency, and it's like that sounds like a literal nightmare <laughs> to me. If sure. I if I didn't know, right? If I was like I felt like if I was un undereducated or, or unaware, whichever term makes more sense and is less offensive, then uh, that's how I would um, you know I would I would feel like that would turn me away from wanting to bring you know someone I knew or recommended or you know my you know younger brother or daughter, whatever it might be, to that space because I'd be like, well, I don't want my eight-year-old sure. son to be, you know, shooting people in the face with weapons and, and you know, have me, I have to pay to enter and, they, you know, so yeah. I've always stayed so far away from it, but now it's just like, it seems like it can't stop. I feel like it's just taking over the entire ecosystem because these cryptocurrencies, companies obviously have an enormous amount of marketing funds and they can just penetrate the industry. Yeah. They can find the people like TSM who don't care. Like what TSM's like, oh, I'm so worried about losing this brand's dollars. Like, I'm not worried mm -hmm. about anything. I got yeah. FTX money, and if you want to work with us, come work with us. And if you don't, then it's like I'll just find someone who does kind of thing. You know what I mean? And it's not like companies like Riot and all those guys dictate a lot of what, what you know, TSM can and cannot do. But we saw a little bit of it there. Yeah. But then Riot ends up partaking in the cake themselves, <laughs> which, which blew my mind even more because yeah. I never thought a game developer was going to jump in on it, especially a game developer that targets, like, all ages so much. Mm -hmm. To be able to, you know, to target that, and now it's sponsored by cryptocurrency, which again I felt like, this is, you know, is a little iffy in that in that older generation target. But um, hey, you know, you never know. It's you know, the more the more it comes into the norm, just like gaming in general, you yeah. know, the more it's going to be fine, you know, across the board. So uh, I do hope that uh, it becomes more and more uh, part of the norm, so that we can have a whole other category to get sponsorship in. Sure. Um, <laughs> I guess that, that's my long form initial thoughts on how I'm just blown away that cryptocurrency companies keep coming in and, and buying the space out. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I, I wanna go back to one pay point you made at the beginning when you are talking about seeing the sections in these deals where it's like, no alcohol, no nicotine, stuff like that. And I know specifically for alcohol, because this was a discussion around the LCS over the last couple of years, because uh, if you watch the LCS broadcast, Bud Light is now yep. a big sponsor. and. The laws or rules around that uh, typically 
uh, relate to the average age of your audience. And so, with the LCS being around as long as it has, and, and esports now really coming into its own, it would seem like while gaming and esports will always have a solid chunk of a young audience, it seems like the audience has grown older, it has gotten access to a lot of more older viewers, so now alcohol has become a legitimate advertising path for an esports broadcast, and I would see crypto possibly in the same vein, so maybe now it's just understanding that the audience is just getting older, so these are lucrative and understandable deals to happen. I think it's still understandable when you talk about game devs being nervous about it. Uh, you talk about Riot being one that has access to all different ages. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely going to be still a very relevant conversation for all kinds of esports titles, esports uh, orgs, esports tournament organizers. Um, so uh, I would say I am still surprised, kind of like you, that it's happening, especially how quickly, right? We're seeing all these different deals left and right it's with not like all it's kinds of people partnering with crypto. Dip your toe in the water stuff. Yeah. It's no, like, by the in. way, I own you now. <laughs> $210 million, $15 million, $70 million. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy amounts. It's incredible. And I mean, is it? Am, am I always happy to see more money coming into the space? Sure. Yeah. It still makes me a little nervous. And I, again, I'm still not someone who is fully bought into crypto and completely understands it, but I'm just curious to see, and it's probably going to be uh, a year or two down the line as we see, you know, have these sites that they partnered with continue to blow up. What are the kind of returns on investment that these companies have seen? I'm curious to see. It's going to take some time to understand, hey, are these good partnerships? What is happening from them? But uh, I would say I'm like you, I'm, I'm nervous here at the start and I'm curious to see what happens. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. Um, YouGov, I talked about him a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. just a statistical site that I mm -hmm. utilize that takes data from um, esports orgs and their audiences mm -hmm. and yada yada. Uh, one of the statistics that most recently came out that was super interesting was which percentage of esports fans base, like, felt x way yeah right so it was like oh what percentage of uh team liquid's fan base is you know interested in cryptocurrency or mm -hmm. actively invest in cryptocurrency right or would utilize their cryptocurrency like they had a lot of those kind of crypto questions and the high like without a doubt you know which org's fan base was most interested in cryptocurrency hundred thieves or tsm i would say tsm okay i and mean that would the, make sense and now the question is is the ftx sponsorship directly affecting yes. these numbers. Now are people who are TSM fans, let's say the majority of North America, Sure. Um, does that now immediately, you know, I don't want to say like normalize, right? But does mm -hmm. that immediately normalize cryptocurrency to that entire demographic just with that one sponsorship? Because right. if it does, like, that's crazy marketing. Yeah. Like that's ludicrous, right? And these numbers are I mean, they're they're already coming out. People yeah. they're already seeing it. it's like I don't remember, it was something like eighty three percent of TSM fans um are comfortable and and accept or use cryptocurrency regularly. Yeah. But in the next closest was like, you know, sixty something percent with like hundred thieves or like team liquid or whatever it is, right? So it's like I think it's pretty I think I think it's some statistics like that that really kind of blow my mind when you look at cryptocurrency because you know it's uh, it's people either like are in love with it or they're terrified and hate when people talk about it. Yeah, right? there doesn't so, seem to be a middle ground. Yeah, but that's but that's usually how things are, right? Mm -hmm. Polarizing things like that usually start off that way, and then eventually it meets in the middle where it's just like, yeah, of course we have cryptocurrency. Hundred Thieves, Hoodie Org, TSM, Crypto Org. You know, and, and what what which <laughs> uh, which org do you think had the highest um, percentage of fans that um, liked the Louis Vuitton? There you go. I wonder which org it was, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it, it really was actually interesting seeing these large marketing deals directly affect the audience, which, I mean, of course it would, but, like, it, you know. I mean, and it feels like with esports, with how dedicated fans are, it would seem like, it wouldn't surprise me that a new brand deal with a specific org would definitely have a heavy influence on the actions of the fans, right? If... X org partners with Y, uh, you know, peripheral developer. Sixty percent of the fans are immediately going to be like, "Well, now I want those peripherals because my favorite player uses those." So I feel like esports definitely is a market where you can very 
easily tap into those fan bases if you partner with the right teams and you make the right deals. So, like, I think that makes sense. And while it is surprising to see the numbers, I'm not surprised to see that fans would immediately be like, TSM made a deal with FTX. Cool. I'm going to start using FTX. You know, maybe if they weren't a crypto person before, I would see probably lower numbers there. But I would say if anybody was already a crypto head and a TSM fan, it would not surprise me for them to immediately be like, cool, I'm going to FTX now because that's my org's place. But even then, right, it's like they know that. Like right? all the yeah. FTX's marketing is built around like, don't know anything about cryptocurrency, never gotten into cryptocurrency before. There you go. Here's your first step. Yeah. You know what I mean? So TSM it's like, figured it out. You can too. They know, <laughs> you know, they just know, right? Yeah. And it's like, you got like people like Myth and those guys whose audiences are, I'd say younger. Sure. Right? Like just annihilating them. In a good way, not in a bad way. I'm just saying the marketing is just the like, numbers, just yeah. absolutely crushing yeah. everybody. So there you go. You go. Fanatics into crypto. Last story of the day. Let's talk about man, the man, Tim the Tatman, Ooh. announced uh, today, just this afternoon, I think, because uh, Luke uh, hit my DMs before we were going to record the show and was like, we got to talk about this. Tim the Tatman has officially joined Complexity Gaming. Uh, he now has controlling interest in complexity and is interesting enough fun fact he's a big uh, dallas cowboy fan and who do you know is a majority stakeholder of complexity gaming hmm. no but no uh, no other than jerry jones Ever the heard of owner him? of the dallas cowboys so what a coincidence incredible Not. <laughs> news here for tim the tapman yeah. and for complexity yeah super cool i mean i i was completely surprised when I, I woke, because I, I, I just all the rumors like, were saying he was going to Hunter Thieves. Yeah, right? I, just, I just felt like I was. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was a little underhyped. I feel like the announcement was a little lackluster. Um, but I mean, that's it. Literally, just like I felt like it just got dropped on my lap, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is, <laughs> this is a thing now. You know what I mean? I wanted, sure. I wanted more pizzazz out of it. I wanted more, you know, whatever. But nonetheless, super cool. Complexity is an incredible org. Um, obviously, uh, we know. He's a huge Cowboys fan. He's always yes. tweeting about it, right? And always making bets and playing fantasy and all that kind of jazz. So uh, super cool to see him, you know, just doing what he loves with people who, you know, obviously are in that kind of same boat. So should be super cool. I don't know exactly what his plans are to do with it or, mm-hmm. you know, what he what he envisions complexity really doing. I know they're mostly a European org um, more than they are an, an A org. But regardless, super cool. Good for Tim. Yeah. Um, you know, keep, keep crushing. And he's just, you know, going to king way his his all the way through so yeah and i mean i think it's a, the the bigger win here is almost for complexity right uh, and this is not like this yeah. is not a small org but they're not at the same level of a tsm or a hundred thieves or i agree a but i feel like they should be by now well because they have the same they have the same foundation as the rest of them they've been around forever they have yeah. the same. They have the same roots. They have the same funding. You know what I mean? It's like it really just comes down to the fact that they didn't. They never had like. It feels the like star, they didn't make the same. Maybe. Yeah, they didn't make the same pushes in, on a merchandise and content yeah. creation stand front that you have seen from these other orgs. But I would say, getting Tim in in the big way that they have would tell me that this is maybe complexity saying, we can, be a G two a TSM. You know and compete or, or in 100 Thieves and compete with these guys, we've got now one of the biggest content creators out there under our banner. So I think this is maybe the signal that Complexity is realizing that, hey, we do have that same foundation. We just need to take those big steps. And I think this is a huge one. You know, Congratulations to Complexity. I think this is incredible. Um, and I think they're going to see uh, some really great returns from this because now you've just made, you know, you've tapped in, it's talking like FTX, right? Now, look at all these Tim the Tatman fans. If anybody wasn't a hardcore fan of an esports org already, they're probably a Complexity fan now. Dude, Tim's got a good jersey too. you seen, right? you've seen or logo. you seen his logo? Mm-hmm. It's like he's got it on the Complexity jersey mm-hmm. now, so all the new Complexity jerseys have Tim's logo on them. Mm-hmm. That's swag, bro. Yeah. I think it's really tight. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, Good job, little Timmy. (laughs) Uh, That's it for today. Uh, Luke, you talked about it. You play a little Call of Duty. Any other games you've been playing lately? Uh, Back on the Valorant grind. Yep. I'm absolutely insane at that game. Um, (laughs) Well, actually, I'm either insane or I'm completely asleep. It's one or the other. So middle ground again. Yeah, I played a couple games of Valorant these these last couple days. Had a good time with that. Um, uh, They just, like, need to remove Icebox. 
from the game. <laughs> like, it is such a poor... Like, they made a new... Um, I haven't played Fracture yet, but Breeze, I think, is a pretty well-designed map. I'm a, pr I'm a pretty big fan of Breeze. I think it's a pretty fun map to play. Okay. I think Icebox is easily the worst map that's ever been made in the history of mankind in any game ever. Like, okay. that is it. You successfully ruined my life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it really is terrible. I do not like that map. Yeah. Um, I think Fracture's brand new, so I haven't had a chance to, to play that yet. But overall, I'm playing some Valorant. I think Valorant's been really fun. Um, I know we played a little bit a, 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 like a week or so ago, yep. but I've been on most nights, so jump in the train. Um, actually, I think I saw you on last night. Mm -hmm. I think you were dueling. I was somebody. grinding, yeah. I was grinding comp, comp last yeah. night, so... Um, I had four, but I would have invited you, but you had a duo. Um, but I was playing some, uh, I want to play some Apex, but obviously I couldn't. Played yeah. a little bit of the Call of Duty Vanguard beta this weekend, obviously. Enjoyed yep. that. Um, I really did enjoy it. I, I would, I would continue to play here and there, mm -hmm. um, if the game was always free. Um, what else? I've been playing a ton of Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Mm, I think nice. that is, that, I think that's pretty fun. I think I'm around like 7k MR right now. So, Ooh, okay. I think once like 80, 8400 or so is like top 200. So, I'm... Just kind of see. He's on can, his way. I'm just trying to see if I can casually break into the top 200 again. Okay. I did it when the game first came out, but I haven't like grinded since then. So I'm just kind of. He's on his way. I'm keep, just cruising my way up, seeing if I can get there. Keep an eye out um, for him. I think that's mostly it. I've just been playing like a mostly. Oh, and then uh, me and Kales are playing um, Ty the Tasmanian Devil. You ever play those games from back in the day? It's like old school games. Uh, they like remastered them for the Switch. Okay. Um, we already beat one, and now we are, are currently playing through two. Okay. Um, so just uh, one of those random solo single player games that I that we like to play through every once in a while. So I'm I'm, I'm I'm gaming. He's a gamer. I've been gaming. What you got? Uh, definitely Valorant. Uh, I will say I have softened up on Icebox the more I've played it. I still it's still like my least favorite map uh, of those. All right, you're clear. Um, I think Breeze is okay i still need to play it more fracture is yeah, I think weird Breeze is fun dude fracture is weird and i'm you know and i know it's like it's a non-traditional map design it's going to take more getting used to than other maps but my initial reaction just i just bounced right off i was like i am so confused um so we'll see definitely on the valorant grind i think i was like plus 50 or 60 uh rank points last night in like seven games so i was happy with that i didn't is it quite... by ranked points yeah so it's oh, i thought i just of... randomly went up and down no now they they have actually made it so it's kind of like uh, like lp in, in league you Dude, can at the actually end of the see freaking the points going game up everything's all yeah, right <laughs> i'm all, i don't many, know what's going on bro i'm like too click, many click, colors click, and click 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 parts. Recue. click yeah. click my mvp yes click 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 re re yeah. replay you know <laughs> so been playing valorant you know what i played for the first time in a couple months the other mm. night was uh among us among us yes and Did you have a whole 10 or what i had a whole 10 That's and crazy. it was actually a lot of fun you know i didn't stop playing it because i stopped enjoying it i just kind of got into other games got busy with work obviously and stuff like that it's so hard to get 10 people at the same time dude. it is it's it a lot is of effort but jumping back into it was a lot of fun and it was cool i was playing with kind of a group of people i've never played with before in terms of among us and it was funny because the first uh crewmate game i had i go in and i think it's like the second round and i definitively catch a killer and so we come into the meeting and i'm like all right so this is what happened. I'm like, I'll do my part really fast. And then whoever I'm going to use can then talk after me. And so I just start rattling off. Okay, I went here. I did this. I saw this. I saw that. And I just rattle off like the perfect details of my entire round, which is about probably a minute to a minute and a half. And I, as soon as I finish talking, there's kind of silence for about five to 10 seconds. And then the person I'm accusing just goes, that was so good. I'm just going to vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, bro, how did you do that? And I'm like, I have played a lot of very sweaty <laughs> games of Among Us in very sweaty lobbies. I'm like, what I just did is like the bare minimum that you have to do to be able to survive in those lobbies. So it was really funny, but everything was really cool. Definitely after that game, I was like, all right, we're gonna sweat a little less. This is a way more casual lobby. I'm just gonna goof around, but it was a lot of fun to get back into it. It's definitely a game that, you know, I'm not gonna play every single week, but if I can get a group of 10, together and we're gonna have a good time it is i'm definitely gonna do it but i had a lot of fun also i got some good luck uh lady that i'm dating we went to target the other day bought some uh singles for evolving skies and she is not a pokemon player or doesn't open cards she opened me a golden rare she got me a full face card which is i already had one oh, but still okay. oh i'm like i'll sell that guy or trade that guy i was like good pulls i was hyped you got me way overhyped for this 
Oh, you I'm hyped, sorry. You hyped me up for it. Dude, I was so... Oh, I know, I know. I, I so wish it was like an alternate art. I was so ready for you to rail me with something crazy. <laughs> Rayquaza! Yeah, dude. I was, about, I was literally about to be like... <laughs> but if you hit a Bro. Rayquaza altar, you better just call me. Like, right, no matter on where, the spot. Any, no matter where you are, dude, you gotta just instantly call literally me. Literally two in the morning. <laughs> I would, I'll pick up. What's I'll, going on? <laughs> I see my phone ring, it's all JC, I'm all... What's going on? Did you do it? You're all, I fucking did it. I'm all, oh my god. <laughs> I think there is a booster box in my near future here. I've been waiting to see if any chilling rains come up. I haven't, but I think yeah, I was at a shop. Definitely... I was at a shop yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say they were 165, and I was like, that's a little rich. I was like, Bleh. yeah. I was but like, I think there's up. definitely an evolving skies booster box here in my near future. You know, future. I did see the uh, vivid voltage they had for 135, and I was like, since when did that drop? I typically see those at like 160. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty low. If I didn't have almost that entire set, I would have probably bought it. But I, yeah, I, I, I mean, did. hey, I will say. If you see a Vivid Voltage booster box for that low, I'll take that too. Okay. Because that's okay. pretty cool. I'll, I'll take a chunk of chew. Okay. Okay. I know. That'd be so sick. That'd be so cool. If you pulled Rainbow Chunk at you, I'd be like, oh, man. <gasps> um, but yeah, no, overall, uh, I'm pretty excited. I don't know if we'll be able to stream Pokemon this week because of um, Apex exploding. But yeah. uh, regardless, you we'll know. We'll probably come back next week, though. Yeah. Closing out the season here. Uh, but it's been fun. Uh, guys, hope you enjoyed the show today. If you want to reach out to us on Twitter, ask questions, tell us what you're uh, playing this week. He's at Shimonahi on Twitter. I'm at Caster Yeh, so feel free. Uh, would love to hear from you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you wherever you find us, uh, we're available on YouTube uh, and Spotify and Apple Podcasts, wherever you want to listen to us. So we're on all of those platforms. So make sure to check us out. Check us out on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash esports arena. Bunch of shows this week, bunch of stuff going on. And uh, if you want to grab some merch as well, we had some cool stuff, esportsarena.com, shop.esportsarena.com. Check us out there. And that's it. Episode six uh, in the books. Y'all have a great week. Luke, always fun to sit with you, man. Always. See you guys next time.